In this video, we are going to talk about the thoracolumbar junction syndrome, also known as Menia syndrome. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Patients who present with low back pain, but also ipsilateral, gluteal and groin pain may be experiencing referred pain from spinal nociception from the thoracolumbar junction, abbreviated as TLJ. Robert Manier first described thoracolumbar syndrome in 1974, which is why this syndrome is commonly known as Manier syndrome. The TLJ may be more susceptible to biomechanical disturbances due to lower stability compared to the thoracic spine as the last two ribs are not attached to the sternum. Furthermore, it is an area where the alignment of the facet joints change from the frontal plane in the thoracic facets to the sagittal plane in the lumbar facets. This transitional position might make the TLJ more susceptible to overload. The pathomechanism is similar to that of lumbar facet syndrome. Irritation of the facet joints and or articular capsule and or excessive paraspinal muscle tone may cause irritation of the neural structures and produce clinical symptoms. These neural structures are the dorsal rami, but also the ventral rami of the lower thoracic and upper lumbar nerve roots from T11 to L2. Next to tenderness upon palpation and pressure of the TLJ, irritation of the dorsal rami in the TLJ area can refer pain to the unilateral iliac crest and upper gluteal region. Irritation of the ventral rami of the TLJ region can lead to unilateral pseudovisceral pain in the hypogastric area, for sciatic neuralgia, tenderness of the pubic symphysis, and hypersensitivity of the intestines. Pain is triggered by extension and or rotation and does not cross the body's midline as the nociceptive structures are only innervated unilaterally. Be aware that Mania syndrome is rather a rare clinical pattern. It is therefore advisable to first exclude the lower lumbar spine, the SI joint and the hip as the responsible areas of nociception. Next to tenderness of palpation of the TLJ, the iliac crest should be palpated for tenderness. Move 7 cm laterally from the midline and wrap the crest in an up and down motion on the posterior iliac crest point and this should elicit sharp pain as the irritated cutaneous branches of T11 to L1 are compressed. Menia suggests to compare the sensitivity difference on the iliac crest, the inguinal canal or the greater trochanter by rolling and tightening the skin on both sides. In the Kipler fold test, the examiner raises a fold of skin between the thumb and forefingers and rolls it along the trunk perpendicular to the course of the dermatomes. The patient should experience more tenderness and hyperesthesia on the affected side compared to the healthy one. At last, it has to be mentioned that TLJ syndrome is diagnosed clinically as most radiological studies will be normal and false positive results are common. Only a diagnostic nerve block in which the affected facet joint is injected with local anesthesia is described to be useful to confirm the hypothesis. Originally, Mania proposed manipulative therapy for the TLJ region. Furthermore, Optekin et al. in the year 2017 showed that steroid injections and exercise were able to decrease pain. No recommendations can be given at this point, as hard evidence is rather scarce. Alright, this was our video on the TLJ syndrome. If you want to learn how to perform a quick test that can help you to distinguish between nociception from the hip, SI joint or lumbar spine, click on the video right next to me. If you are interested in more content from us, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, our website physiotutors.com or get our very own assessment ebook. This was Kai for Physiotutors. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.